And lastly, mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about rejection because I feel mm -hmm. like there's this idea that, oh, well, if you've gotten this, this, and this, like you've made it and how could you possibly wait? You've gotten rejection too and it's it's quite a surprise. Mm -hmm. So can you talk a little bit about kind of the proportions about rejection versus success and what that could look like? Uh, my best friend is the, the epitome of this. She has the best story, so I'll tell her story first. Um, she got into uh, Texas State and never got cast in a main stage or a studio show. Never in four years. And she's cute. She's blonde. She's girl next door. She's a workhorse. Like her work ethic is amazing and she's talented. But she hated herself mm -hmm. in college. And, and, and had so much jealousy and animosity towards other people. I mean, me as one of her best friends that, yeah, was getting cast in all these things. And she just like, she almost quit. Mm. She almost quit because she was like, this is telling me something that I'm never getting cast in this pool. I, I must be horrible. No one likes me. I'm just not made to do this. She runs circles around the rest of us as an adult mm. in her career. Girl books. She's booked multiple commercials, some national, so she's like DoorDash commercials, like really high value names. And she, gosh, the amount of that, that girl auditions, I'm just like, okay, <laughs> fine. And now she's the person that if I'm like, oh, I, you know, she'll text me or whatever. She'll be like, hey, are you doing this audition? I'm like, yeah, but now I feel like I don't want to do it because you're doing it, <laughs> so you're going to get it. And she can just, she, she books. She books all the time. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you look at all of these people who booked in college, and some of them aren't even working in the industry anymore. Like they, they burned out, they quit. I burned out for a while. So it's like, yeah, um, it, where you're at right now does not indicate where you're gonna be in the future. And I think if you can have that broader spectrum thought in your head, that can help. The rejection in the moment is hard. It's really hard. I'm trying to think like, um, So many things. It's like I literally can't count the amount of roles that I've gotten rejected for. What there's there's an old statistic of like, for every hundred auditions you go on, you might get one. Yes. <laughs> and that's exhausting yes. because the amount of time, energy, thought, and process that you have to put into every single audition to know that you're not going to get it right. is so mm -hmm. it, it can be draining. It can be really draining. Um, I, I struggled a lot with rejection in high school um, because I felt like, again, my best friend, she and I were always going up for the roles. And if you know Mary Swill, you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> um, and she would get them all the time. And I would maybe get like one or two things or we would... We would share a solo and show choir, all of these things. And I just thought, she's prettier than I am. She's more talented than I am. She's all of these things and she doesn't even try. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's playing soccer. I'm, I'm here working my butt off going to all of these lessons and uh, camps. And I'm going and working at CCT in Columbus and just all of these things, and I'm not likable, I'm not as likable as she is. It, I made it so personal, mm -hmm. so personal. Mm -hmm. And it hurt no one but myself. Like, I'm sure it hurt her a little bit too in the, in the fights and things, but we're good. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, having those feelings doesn't make the director think any differently of you. There's no form of pity in this business. Like, it's not like, oh, oh, well, 
you know, Allison always gets the roles and I never get the like, Tough crap. Like, <laughs> that's what people are going to say. Welcome to the biz. And it only hurts yourself. It really only hurts yourself. In college, a lot of you, you gain a little bit more perspective, but I think the pressure goes up because you're putting your life now in these moments. You're like, oh my God, if I don't have this on my reel and if I don't do this, then I can't do this. And when I leave college, then I'm not gonna have a reel and blah, 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 mm-hmm. all of these things. And it's the same, th- you have to know your trigger. Like I said, you have to know your triggers. What are the same thoughts that go through your head every single time because it's the same ones? Mm-hmm and being able to recognize those. Mine are always, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not thin enough, and they are more likable than I am. Mm. Because I was always told that I was a dramatic person and not in the, you know, the the little childhood things that stick in your brain. Oh yeah. Yeah, oh it's Reagan's pushy, Reagan's mean, Reagan's, Reagan's dramatic, all of these things, and oh, Allison's so thin, or this person's so thin, or they're so athletic, or oh my God, uh, you know, silly things like boyfriends saying that in, in, in your young years that they like this girl over you and they're prettier than you or whatever, and you're just like, you don't know how much that affects you and how much that creates a cycle of thought right. in your brain. But if you can identify what those triggers are and be able to go, hmm, all right, that's that thought again, we're gonna let that go. Or maybe we're gonna sit in it for 24 hours and that's what we're gonna allow ourselves. I had some people who had that rule where it's like you're allowed to be as upset you are for 48 hours and then you have to get on with it. I can't do that. (laughs) That works for some people and that's great. But the other thing that, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. It's, um, the book is called The Power of Now and my voice teacher brought it to us. And it is about a man who um, was considering ending his life. And he noticed something that brought an epiphany to him. The thought that kept going through his head was, I hate myself, I hate myself, I hate myself. And what we normally focus on is the word hate. He broke it down to, I hate myself as if I and myself were two separate entities. Mm. And that's what we do with rejection. Mm -hmm. It's like there's the voice inside your head that is maybe the I self, myself or the I, and then there's actually who you are, Mm -hmm. which is the other portion. And these portions love to fight Mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. And so if you can separate these two beings, separate the voice in your head from who you actually are and say, thanks, voice in my head. I know you're just trying to protect me when you say that I'm not pretty enough. Thanks, voice in my head. I know that you're just trying to help me when you say that I didn't hit that note right and I should have and all of these things. But that's not actually about who I am Mm -hmm. and it's not actually helpful. I'm going to allow you to have that moment, but it's not going to affect me. I'm going to allow you to have that moment, but it's not going to affect me. Mm-hmm. That was huge for me. Wow. That was so huge because I, I have obsessive thoughts and the thought patterns. And if I could just break that, I would be OK. And same thing. I A lot of times I'm in my head and my body will feel something. And I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, why do I? gosh, this happens so much, right? Where you're like, I know, logically, everything in this situation is fine, but my body feels like it's going to explode. My body feels like sobbing. My body feels like breaking down. Hold up. I appreciate you. You're having this moment. It's just not helpful right now. I'm going to help you move through it, and then we're going to continue being the person that I want to be. Mm. So. And it's like we, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Not isolating the two. They have to be your friend. Yeah. But I think it's just it, the, the ability to separate that voice in your head and who you are is, that was just a huge epiphany for me in terms of rejection because I cycled through those same thoughts and my triggers over and over again and being able to say, hi, that's a trigger. I appreciate you. I know you're just trying to protect me, but that's not what I'm about right now. We can move on. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Easier said than done. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it reminds me of the, I can't remember what it's called. It's something about the high five where this, this woman invented this technique where she would go into her mirror every morning mm. and she would just look at herself and give herself a high five. Yeah. And then at first she's like, no, I don't want to do that. That's mm-hmm. stupid. That's ridiculous. But then all of a sudden that high five, there's things in the brain that start happening with that. Mm-hmm. And then it, it completely changed her, her view of herself, her self-sabotage mm-hmm. and in turn her life. Yeah. Yeah. It's always um, that, that saying of like, speak to yourself the way that you speak to a friend. Mm-hmm. Yep. That's how it works. There's a little friend in your head yes. or in your body and you have to take care of them right. because you work together to create who you are. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Reagan, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Wow. All thank of this you. stuff. All this stuff to unpack. So I know we're very, very grateful to you to have you here and to have you share all of your experiences and knowledge. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I want you to imagine what it would be like if you had so much focus, so much zen, so much peace, so much calmness, and so much excitement at the same time before performance. As in, like, you're not getting in your head, you're not freaking out, you're not becoming a basket case, or you're not a hot mess. So if you feel like sometimes that is you, imagine what it would feel like if that wasn't the case, if that wasn't a problem anymore. It would be pretty awesome, right? So... What is the first step to that? Working with your mindset. So if this is something that's of interest to you, I recommend going to stopcaringwhatthethink.com. If you're a performer and you want to have more confidence, if you want to get out of your head, these are tips and tricks that I'm offering to you for free. It's a free resource that can help you have more confidence to manage that anxiety and just to feel like you can enjoy life again. You can enjoy performing. That's what it's all about, right? So stopcaringwhatthethink.com. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. I post new videos every Wednesday and a new podcast every Friday. Thanks.